All right, and we are live. Good evening po sa inyong lahat mga kaguro. And of course, welcome back to Gurong Pinoy. Hello, of course, sa lahat ng members ng team, Skinner, Sections A and B. We are currently preparing for your let September 24 of this year. And of course, your online application will be starting on June 23rd until August 24th po yung inyong application. The target release of your results will be on December 7th. So again, if you are still not a member of Team Skinner, napuputol po yung ating videos dyan sa ating YouTube channel, dyan po sa and Facebook page. And so if you'd want to join Team Skinner, you can answer our quizzes, you can join our full-length video, no, you can watch the full-length video, and of course, you can download our PDF file na babalikan po lahat ng ating videos of Team Skinner. Just send a message to our Facebook page. If you are watching us on Facebook right now, mag-send lamang po na message on that same page. All right, now, remember, if you are part of our major ship groups, if uh, you are part of our English, Math, Filipino, Gensai, Soksai, Mape, Values Education, TLE, AFA groups, we will be starting with your orientation on Saturday of this week. So this Saturday, you will have your orientation that's going to be at 7 p.m. on your uh, respective FB groups. Then you'll have your diagnostic test on Sunday of this weekend. Then, of course, we will continue with the different um, discussion. Uh, June 24 to 25th, naman po, you will have your mid-review pre-board will be on August 5th to 6th. Then, of course, you have your final coaching schedule on your screen right now. Final recap, September 16th to 17th. So, again, it's just a one-time payment. Dito po sa Guru Pinoy, dire-direcho po yung ating pagre-review until the day that you take the letter. There's no hidden fees. There's no um, additional payment no, for our final coaching, final recap, your pre-board, wala pong additional payment. So, again, uh, we stress on the fact that you can pass the let with just um, a minimum amount of money. You know? So, hindi po kailangan gumasos ng 10K, 7,000, 8,000 para mak makapasa po sa inyong licensure exam for teachers. And, of course, as te testimonies, ang dami na po natin mga nakapasa from Team Grow to Team Gardner, Team Erickson, Team Piaget, of course, and uh, Bruner, no? Team Bruner po, naghihintay na lamang for their um, results, uh, malapit na malapit na within this month. Then, of course, Team Skinner ay yung ating batch ngayon and our future LPT. So, again, just send a message to our Facebook page if you'd want to become a member of our major ship groups. Ganun din po sa Team Skinner, that's Gen Ed and Prof Ed. All right, now, para mas ganahan pa po kayo, 100,000 pesos goes to our September 2023 20, top three. So again, if you are part of Team Skinner and you end up ranked three sa inyong licensure exam for teachers, you will be receiving 100,000 pesos from Guru Pinoy. 200,000 pesos for top two, then of course, if you rank first, you will be receiving 300,000 pesos. That's cash from Guru Pinoy. So again, become a member of Team Skinner para mas inspired tayong magtrabaho at inspired po tayong mag-aral sa ating licensure exam for teachers. And of course, once you top the let, we are going to celebrate with you through these monetary, uh, monetary prizes. Okay, so again, be a member of Team Skinner. All right, now tonight's discussion is Gen Ed 30 items that our members have answered through their quizzes since last night no? until um, ngayong 7 p.m. Okay, so again, mapa member na po kayo sa Team Skinner. It's very easy to become a member. Just send a message to our Facebook page. Now, please do not forget to like, love, share our video, start a watch party, tag your friends. You can also so, uh, show your support to us by sending us stars on Facebook and super chat, super secret sa mga po sa ating YouTube channel. All right, now, just like any other night, let us all have our opening prayers. So, sumahan niyo po ako mga kagro. Dear Lord, I come to you to ask for your guidance and direction in this study session. I ask that the Holy Spirit fill me with strength, creativity, and understanding to get through my studies without difficulty or sin. Help me hold my focus and attention. Help me to retain all that I learned. Please make my mind sharp and keep distractions at bay. If any part of my studying is weak or lacking in some way, let it be revealed so that I may correct it. Thank you for this opportunity to learn. Amen.
All right, now once again, this is general education. Like, love, share our video, start a watch party, tag your friends, show your support by sending us stars on Facebook. Then, of course, super chat, super stickers naman po dyan sa ating YouTube channel. Be interactive so that your learning becomes more meaningful and more, um, more um, memorable. And then, of course, please do not forget, do not forget to write the item number para hindi tayo nakakonfuse kung para saan po yung inyong uh, answer. All right? This is Jen Ed. We start with question number one. Number one, nagagamit ang uri ng pagbabasag ito sa practical na buhay gaya ng paghahanap ng address o numero ng tao sa direktoryo o paghahanap ng mahalagang konsepto sa aralin. Would it be letter A is scanning, letter B is skimming, letter C previewing, or letter D casual? Team Brunner, don't be hesitant to enroll, sabi ni Ma'am Stargazer. Legit, lalabas lahat ng pinag-aralan dito. Maraming salamat po. Alright, 1A. 1A. Again, please put the item number so that I can uh, keep track of your answers. No, pakilagay po ng item number. Hindi lamang po yung inyong letter of choice. Okay, number 1, letter A. A lot of you are saying letter A. Some are saying B. Others, C. Okay, again, like, love, and share our video po. You can also start a watch party. All right, going back to question number one. Nagagamit ang uri ng pagbabasan ito sa practical na buhay gaya ng paghahanap ng address o numero ng tao sa direktoryo o paghahanap ng mahalagang konsepto sa aralin. The correct choice here, of course, would be letter A. That's is cunning. Okay, it's cunning. Good evening. Sir Jonathan Gono, so Team Brunner, naghihintay ng results. All right, so number one is letter A, magbunye, magdiwang, lahat ng mga tumpak sa mga liwak naman, of course, move on ka agad. Mabilis po tayong mag-move on dito sa Gurung Pinoy. All right, is cunning is our choice and not is scheming. What's the difference between these two? Is scheming or scheming, okay, that's choice B, no? Ang scheming ay mabilis ang pagbasa upang makuha ang pangkalahatang ideya ng teksto. Pahapyaw ang pagbasa no? kapag ka, uh, ginagamit mo yung scheming. Ginagawa ito para sa pagtingin o paghanap ng mahalagang impormasyon na maaring makatulong sa bumabasa. Okay? So that's scheming. No? You're, you're just trying to get the broad sense of what you're trying to read. Okay? So pahapyaw lamang ang pagbabasa kapag ka ang iyong ginagawa po ay scheming. Now, number two naman is scanning o palaktaw. This is scanning in English. Ang nagbabasa ay tumutunton sa mahalagang salita, mga pamagat at mga subtitulo. Palaktaw-laktaw na pagbubuklat sa material ang paraang ginagamit sa ganitong pagbasa. But of course, if you are looking for a specific bit of information, such as the ones that we have in our question na paghahanap ng address, o numero sa paghahanap po ng number no, in uh, directory. Of course, now hindi na tayo gumagamit ng hard copy ng directory. Nasa cellphone na natin lahat. Pero kapag ka ikaw ay naghahanap ng uh, specific na information, no, specific na piece of information, what you use would be scanning. Okay? So scanning po ang ating tumpak na choice. Now what about C and D? Let's take a look at the rest of the different types of pagbasa. No? So number three, previewing. Sinisuri na mambabasa ang kabuan, estilo at register ng wika ng sumulat. Ano ba yung register? Meron po tayong question on that later. Okay? So preview, no? kabuan lamang. So kung bagay, when you uh, say preview, it's not um, the whole. No? So uh, kung bagay, eh, estilo, ano ba yung style niya? Ano ba yung kabuan ng aking babasahin? Number four, kaswal na pagbasa, kadalasang ginagawa nagawa bilang pampalipas oras lamang. Sana ikaw ay hindi kaswal na relasyon ng inyong jowa. No? Dahil of course, we don't want to be pampalipas oras lamang. So kung ikaw ay uh, walang ginagawa, usually no, ginagawa natin ito through our cell phone. Casually, we just scroll. No? So scroll lang. Minsan, eh, mga videos yung lumalabas. No? So that's just casual viewing. Okay? So in this case here for number four, kaswal na pagbabasa po yan. Number five, masuring pagbasa. Uh, isinasagawa ang pagbasa na ito ng maingat para maunawaan ganap or maunawaan ganap 
ang binabasa upang matugunan ang pangangailangan. No? So this is um, critical reading. No? So with analysis na ina-analyze mo, um, you are reading something critically because you want to really understand it. Ito yung ating ginagamit kapag ka tayo ay nagsa-study, di ba? Sa so, masuring pagbasa. Pagbasang may pagtatala, ito ang pagbasang may kaakibat na pagtatala o pag-highlight ng mahalagang impormasyon sa teksto. Okay? So, uh, when you say pagbasang may pagtatala, you are reading and you are also note-taking at the same time or kung pwede din namang nag-highlight ka na no, uso ngayon yung um, calligraphy, di ba? So, uh, meron kang mga pagsulat, meron kang mga notes while you are doing your reading. That's pagbasang may pagtatala. But of course, we were looking for is scanning letter A for question number one. Okay, so again, number one, letter A po is tumpak. We go to question number two. All right, the information gathered by measuring the height of a plant every day over a two-week period is called letter A, inferences, letter B, variables, letter C, hypothesis, or letter D, data. Ayan, ang sakit naman. Uh, si Sir Francisco Pigao Rosales, sabi ni Sir Francisco, yung umaasa kang maging kayo kaso kaswalang pala. Okay, palipat, uh, palip, hindi palipat, uh, palipas oras lang pala. All right, I see a lot of letter Ds for question number two. Again, please do not forget to like, love, and share our video. Very important po that you are sharing our video so that we can reach out to more people. Okay, number two, letter D, and that would be tumpak. Okay, so data. Remember, you don't say datas. Okay, data po is already in plural form. Datum is the singular form. And this, of course, is part of our scientific method. No, alam na alam to ng ating mga gen sci majors. Okay, so remember your scientific method. This is the way you handle uh, scientific questions, the way you answer scientific questions. Okay, so the first step that you have there is a scientific scientific method mo, the one on top, is to observe and to uh, form your question, okay? So what is the difference between observation and inference? We'll get to that in our succeeding slides, okay? So, um, mamaya ko po explain no? And then after that, of course, you come up with your research topic and a certain area. Remember, your research topic, your research question should not be vague. It should not be too broad. It should be something specific, okay? Now, for you to answer your research topic, of course, you'll have to deal with it or you have to do an experiment. But bago yan, you have to come up with your hypothesis. No? Yung hypothesis po natin dito, this one right here, this is plural in form. No? So kapag ka plural po, eh, eh, meron tayo letter E, gumagamit tayo ng letter E sa last part, kapag ka singular naman, SIS. Okay? So hypothesis, when you say hypothesis, of course, karaniwan sinasabi natin, this is an educated guess. No? So you are trying to predict, you are trying to make your, your guess, but your guess is based on uh, your observation, okay? So you are doing it scientifically. That's your hypothesis. So uh, for you to check whether your hypothesis is right or wrong, what you do now would be your experiment. So mag experiment ka ngayon, no? From your experiment, you would be using the different types of variables or you would be coming up with your different types of variables. I'm also going to be talking about that in our next slide. Now, once you have your experiment, you do your measurement, yung mga mini-measure nyo po at yung mga nire-record nyo, you would call those your data. So, yan yung data mo, no? yan yung ating uh, mini-measure. And of course, that's, uh, what, that's what we gather and that's what we study. And eventually, you analyze your data or data, okay, you can pronounce this as data or data, then of course you may report your conclusions and so you share your um, discovery or you share the results of your study to the scientific community, okay? So these are the different steps of your scientific method. Lumalabas po ito sa inyong licensure exam for teachers in gen ed and also of course sa ating po mga majors, okay? So data is tumpak. Now, as I've mentioned, no, there are several types of data. There's numerical and there's also categorical. Another term for your numerical data is quantitative. Quanti, quantitative, no? so that's pertaining to numbers or made of numbers. Another term for your categorical data would be your qualitative. 
Okay, so qualitative data naman po ito. Now, ito pong lahat dito sa ilalim, lumalabas po ito sa inyong, sa inyong let. No? So, dapat po uh, alam natin kung ano yung mga different types of data. So, again, quantitative or numerical data made of numbers, qualitative or categorical data made of words or descriptions. Okay, so under your numerical data, you have two types, no? so continuous and discrete. When you say continuous, infinite, no? so wala siyang uh, specific na, na quantity, or um, when you say infinite, of course, it, it does not end. Okay, so for example, age, weight, or blood pressure, kumbaga it can vary, hindi siya fixed. Okay, so depende, no, sa kung ano ginagawa mo, there's a lot of factors that may affect your continuous type of data. Ang discrete mo naman na data, it's finite. Okay, so when you say finite, it is limited, it is exact. For example, your shoe size. Hindi po pwedeng shoe size mo today is uh, size 5 tapos bukas sasabihin mo size 7 ka. Hindi po po pwede no? because it is finite. And so uh, discrete type of data po itong ating pinag-uusapan. Number of children that you have. I have two kids. Na? So it is uh, finite. It is limited. It is specific. Okay, so that's discrete quantitative data. Now, for your qualitative data, again, or categorical data, you have ordinal and nominal. No? Paborito po itong lahat ng let, itong apat dito, most especially. Okay, so ordinal, uh, there is hierarchy. We are pertaining to order. Okay, so order. Pain severity, how how, uh, how much pain are you feeling? No? Satisfaction rating, the mood, pwedeng first, second, third, no? yung order. That would be your ordinal qualitative data. Nominal naman, there is no hierarchy. Okay? So, walang order eye color, the dog breed, your blood type. Okay? So, um, we cannot say that this is part of your discrete because, of course, fixed siya. Okay? Fixed siya and wala pong hierarchy. And so, this would be under your nominal category or nominal categorical type of data, all right? So these are the different types of data that you have. Again, make sure that you know all of this kasi paborito po ito na inyong lab. Now, uh, I've talked about the difference or I've mentioned the difference between observation and your inference. Now, when you say observation, this is something that's fact-based through your experience, through the use of your senses, okay? So remember, pag sinabi mo observation sa science, it's the way that you use your five different senses. But when you say inference, this is what you think or this is what you have decided. This is your opinion based on what you have observed, okay? So, for example, when you see someone... Um, na nagpapaypay, no? someone paypaying himself or herself, no? so someone fanning himself or herself, you can say that uh, the girl is fanning herself. That's your observation because you can see it, di ba? You can see it. Nakikita mo, nakikita ng inyong mga mata na siya ay nagpapaypay. But when you say that uh, this girl, when you say that this girl feels hot, then that would be an inference. No? So that's your opinion. That's what you think. That's what you have decided based on your observation. Okay, so be very careful din po with the words observation and inference. Sometimes the let would give you a graph and then the let would not ask you for an observation. The let would uh, ask you what can you infer from the graph. And so remember, kapag ka inference, an idea formed from what you can see. Hindi siya direktang nakikita sa inyong graph, but that is an idea, an opinion that you have formed based on what you have seen on the graph. Okay, so be careful with the use of the different terms here. Observation and inference are different. Ma'am, ten ten data. Hello po, good evening, waiting for the result. All right, now three types of variables. I've also mentioned variables that ito kanina yung uh, nasa choice B natin. Whenever you do your experiment, you'll have the three different types of variables. You have independent variable, dependent variable, and controlled variables. Lumalabas po ito sa inyong let, okay? Especially sa gen side, no? Um, when you say independent variable, this is the variable that you manipulate. Ito yung inyong um yung inyong nilagay sa study no or ito yung pinago mo sa inyong study manipulated variable ang um, dependent variable mo naman this is the result okay so when you manipulate something through your manipulated variable and you measure the results 
of your independent variable, then that would be called your dependent variable. So kung ano yung minimeasure mo, actually, that would be your dependent variable. Na? And of course, when you say control variables naman, these are variables that stay constant. Ito yung hindi mo binago. For example, okay, if you have this as your hypothesis, using fertilizer on plants would make them grow faster. What do you think would be your independent variable? Okay, looking at your hypothesis here, using fertilizer on plants would make them grow faster. What is your independent variable? Let's put it in our comment box. Ano po yung ating independent variable sa ating hypothesis dito? Using fertilizer on plants would make them grow faster. I don't see any comments pa at the moment. Fertilizer, sabi ni Ma'am Gina Salas. Okay, using fertilizer. Fertilizer, using fertilizer. Okay, so amount of fertilizer. All right, so fertilizer here would be your independent variable. Manipulated variable. Kasi siya yung uh, inyong nilagay, no? Siya siya kumbaga yung inyong in-inject sa inyong experiment. Kung pwede din namang using, for example, kapag kayong hypothesis mo is using 100 grams of fertilizer would make plants grow faster, no? Ang pupwedeng yung independent variable mo would be the different amounts of fertilizer. So then, independent variable here would be the use of fertilizer. Ano naman po yung ating dependent variable? Which of course we've said is the result, which is the one that we measure. Okay, growth. Okay, growth. Okay, so sabi ng Jervy Ferrer, or Favor, sorry. Um, um, Jervy Favor, growth. Height of plants, sabi ni Mang Sheila. John Billy, Sir John Billy, gumasing, growth. They grow faster, that's correct, okay? So yan po yung inyong dependent variable, the growth of your plants, okay? So tandaan po itong uh, tatlong different types of variables natin, namanamasip din po ito sa inyong let. Now what about your control variables? Ano kaya yung mga examples ng control variables? If this is your hypothesis, ano yung mga examples ng control variables nyo? Okay, what would be some examples of your control variables? Mm -hmm. The plants, the plants, type of soil, and amount of water. Tama si Facebook user, no? The, the plant itself, the same plant, the soil. Okay, so dapat the sunlight, correct? Okay, so when you say controlled variables, dapat ito yung mga variables na hindi mo binago sa inyong uh, dalawang setups na no? kasi meron kang control setup, meron kang experimental setup. Ang uh, control variables mo hindi mo binago, dapat iisa lamang yung inyong binago. If this is your hypothesis, using fertilizer on plant, you are trying to, um, to find out whether if you use fertilizer, would it really make the, the plant grow faster? Dapat the, the other factors would stay constant or controlled. No? So dapat hindi mo binago yung sunlight, hindi mo binago yung type of soil, hindi mo binago yung amount of water, parehas yung type of plant mo. Parehas yung age ng type of plant mo. No? Hindi po pwedeng mo isa, eh mas matagal mo nang uh, tinanim kesa sa isa. Okay? Because that would make using your control variables or keeping the rest of your variables constant or controlled would make your experiment uh, more accurate. Okay? So mas valid, mas, mas, uh, mas uh, correct no? yung inyong ginagawa kesa papalit-palit ka ng lahat ng variables. All right? So sana po ay natandaan yung ating different types of variables, the difference between observation and inference, then of course the different types of data, okay? We go to number three. He was the chieftain of the Limasawa Island in southern Leyte when the first mass in the Philippines was held. Would this be letter A, Raja Siago, letter B, Raja Kulambo, letter C, Raja Sikatuna, or letter D, Raja Humabon? Okay, what's your choice? Number three. Okay, what's your choice? I see a lot of letter Bs. 
letter B for question number three, and that to be right. Okay, so Raja Colombo, yung ating hinahanap. Uh, this right here is a ribulto no, ni Raja Colombo sa Butuan. Okay, so hello po. Good evening sa lahat ng mga taga Butuan City. Okay, so Raja Colombo, yung chief king ng Limasawa Island. Remember yung story na lima daw yung kanyang wife, kaya uh, doon kinuha yung name na Limasawa, limang asawa no, ni Raja Colombo. Now what about the rest of our choices? Raja Siago, also known as Raja Siawi, was the brother of Raja Colombo and he was the chieftain of Butuan and Kalagan, Surigao. Raja Sikatunan man was the one who made the blood compact with Ligaspi. He was the chieftain of Bohol, kaya yung blood compact na uh, sculpture nila ay nasa Tagbilaran, Bohol, na paborito din po yan ang let ninyo. Okay, si Raja Sikatuna and Miguel Lopez de Ligaspi. Uh, sa Tagbilaran Bohol, yung kanilang um, shrine or yung kanilang uh, hindi pala shrine of sculpture. Raha Humabon was the chieftain of Cebu. Okay, so chieftain ng Cebu naman si Raha Humabon. Cousin din siya ni Colombo at saka ni Siago. Siago and Colombo were brothers. Okay, so Raha Colombo ang ating hinahanap. We go to number four. He was the chronicler of the Magellan Expedition and wrote the excerpt Magellan's Voyage Around the World. Letter A, James Alexander Robertson. Letter B, Enrique de Malaca. Letter C, Antonio Pigafetta. Or letter D, Juan de Placentia. All right, for ICCs, again, please do like, love, and share our video po. Very easy for you to like and love our video. Um, there's very few of you who have liked our video. And of course, share our video so that we can reach out to more people. Okay, for letter C, Antonio Pigafetta is tumpak. No? So, siya yung, kumbagang, uh, yung secretary. No? So, siya yung secretary of the Magellan Expedition, yung expedition na uh, yung leader nila was Magellan. Okay, so he was the one who wrote the excerpt, Magellan's Voyage Around the World. Now, what about the rest of your choices? James Alexander Robertson was the one who translated Pigafetta's work in English. Okay, so tinranslate niya yung work ni Pigafetta into English. Enrique de Malaca was a Malay slave and interpreter who completed the circumnavigation. Okay, so si Enrique de Malaca, kumbaga, kinuha siya ni, uh, when you say de, no, Enrique of Malaca. Uh, siya ay isa sa mga slaves ng Magellan Expedition na kumbaga yung nabihag siya during the the um, um, colonization of the Malacca Strait nung no, no, dumaan sila sa Malacca. And of course, uh, he was taken as one of the slaves na, na, na one of the slaves, no? So, sumama din siya sa expedition and he was also the one who interpreted kasi nga, um, he knows the Malayan language. And um, together with Elcano, remember si uh, Magellan ay namatay sa Mactan and so only his men were the ones who completed the circumnavigation. So kasama na doon si Enrique de Malaca, kasama ni, um, ni Elcano. One de Placentia naman uh, wrote Doctrina Cristiana, believed to be the first book in the country, printed not only in Spanish but also in Tagalog. Okay, so the correct choice is letter C, Antonio Pigafetta. We go to question number five. Which natural disaster is measured with a Richter scale? Letter A, earthquake. Letter B, tsunami. Letter C, temperature. Or letter D, sandstorm. Ito po ay lumabas sa March na lip. Okay. Okay, so what's your choice? What is our choice for number five? Number five, ICAs. Okay, and of course, that is correct. Okay, so earthquake, uh, the, the magnitude no, of earthquakes are measured or the strengths of your, your earthquake is measured through the Richter scale. Okay, so this right here is a Richter scale. Measures energy waves emitted by earthquake. Okay, so you have the different uh, measurement there. Zero to 1.9 can be detected only by the seismograph. 
two to uh two to two point nine hanging objects would start to swing three to three point nine comparable to the vibrations of a passing track no so medyo strong na din siya four to four point nine may break windows cause small or unstable objects to fall five to five point nine furniture moves chunks of plaster may fall from walls no malakas na six to six point nine damage to well-built structures, severe damage to poorly built ones. Okay, so dito nagtutumbahan na yung mga gusali, 7 to 7.9 buildings displaced from foundations, cracks in the earth, underground pipes broken, 8 to 8.9 bridges destroyed, 9 and over near total destruction waves moving through the earth, visible with your naked eye. Okay, so these are the different measurements in your Richter scale. Okay, tsunami, letter B tsunami, this is your tidal wave, no? So it is caused by an earthquake, especially if the earthquake's um, epicenter or, uh, yes, no, the, the earthquake's um, epicenter is at uh, or is underwater. Okay, so kapag ka nasa, nasa ocean floor, um, it would or it might start a tsunami. Okay, that's your tidal wave. You pronounce that as tsunami, hindi po tsunami. Okay, letter C, temperature, of course, you use your thermometer to measure temperature. Uh, uminom po, stay hydrated because of course, the temperatures now are very high. No? So, um, napaka-init and so palagi din brown out. Mabuti na lang hindi masyadong sumasabay sa ating live stream kapag ka brown out dito sa panay. Sandstorm, uh, I'm not sure if they are using any device for a sandstorm but usually sa mga kapatid natin, mga kaguru natin na nandyan po sa Middle East, um, minsan merong sandstorm. When I was in Saudi, na nagkaka-sandstorm sometimes and so... Um, uh, cancel din yung klase no, kapag ka may sandstorm. Hello sa mga taga KS8 at uh, saka sa mga taga Middle East. No? Meron ako mga nakaki nakikita kanina. Nakita kanina ng taga KS8. Alright, so earthquake is our choice. Now, what's the difference between magnitude and intensity? Lumalabasin po ito sa inyong left. When you say intensity, this measures the shaking in a certain location. Uh, earthquakes that are shallow and near urban areas can be greatly felt even if they are weak. So, kung baga yung intensity ay kung pa paano uh, kalakas na no, or gaano kalakas nating naramdaman yung lindol. Magnitude naman measures the energy released at the source of the earthquakes. Uh, or of the earthquake. Now, earthquakes that are small in magnitude and far from urban areas were barely felt, but are recorded in your seismograph. Okay? So, you have... Uh, the difference there between in, uh, intensity and magnitude. All right, so ito uh, sabi ni Facebook user, no, tama din naman, magnitude is the strength, intensity is the damage. Okay, so tama po. We go to number six. What is the title of the poem written by Dr. Salizal on his remaining days? Letter A, Felicitacion. Letter B, Goodbye to Leonor. Letter C, Mi Ultimo Adios. Or letter D, Mi Retiro. Facebook user, hindi ka po visible. Next time po, i-click niyo po yung uh, link natin from, for StreamYard. Meron from UAE, Sir Jean Patrick Almadovar from UAE po ba si Sir? Alright, number six, ICCs. Mi ultimo adios, of course. That is the right choice. Okay, so tama, of course. Uh, Felicitacion, he wrote this while he was just 14 years old. He was studying in Ateneo. And he offered this, or he dedicated his, this one for the motherland. No? Felicitacion. Goodbye to Leonor, of course. It's a, a poem written for Leonor Rivera, believed to be his true love. And Miritiro naman was his most profound poem, no? considered to be his most profound poem. When you say profound, of course, it's makabag, uh, makabagbag damdami, no? most emotional poem. It was about the forest in the Pitan and he, uh, it was said that he sent this to his mother. Okay, So that was Miritiro or my retreat. All right, we go to number seven, writing an article. About a fight that never occurred violates which two principles? Letter A, factual reporting and libel. Letter B, copyright infringement and veil of, of ignorance. Letter C, photo ethics and libel. Or letter D, invasion of privacy and accuracy.
Hello, good evening, Ma'am Lindsay Prophets. Kapung ka, listening from Thailand. Ingat po kayo dyan. All right, seven ICAs, factual reporting and libel. No? So if you write an article, okay, so kung baga isinulat mo siya uh, about a fight that never really occurred, it violates which two principles? The correct choice, of course, is factual reporting. Your reporting was not factual. It was not true. And of course, it also violates libel. No? When you say libel, it's written defamation. Paninirang po rin na nakasulat. Remember, kapag ka spoken naman po, you use the term slander. Slander for spoken defamation. Or written defamation, you call this libel. Copyright infringement, of course, you know this. Now, kapag ka, you are using someone else's work without um, without citing that person, then that would be an infringement of the person's copyright. The veil of ignorance, ito po ay a moral reasoning device designed to promote impartial decision-making by denying decision-makers yung mga uh, gumagawa ng desisyon, no? hindi po binibigyan ng access sa impormasyon na maaaring makapag-cause ng pagiging bias nila. Okay, so veil of ignorance. Kung bagay, meron silang belo ng uh, pagkawalang alam, no? Ignorance. Ignorante sila. Okay, so wala silang access into information that would uh, make them bias. Okay, so that's veil of ignorance. Photo ethics, of course. Um, we are not allowed to take someone else's photo or pictures or post them without their permission. Okay, so libel, we've already talked about this. Invasion of privacy naman, this is the intrusion into the personal life of another. Okay, so uh, kumbaga, ipakialamera ka na, mamarites ka na. Marami kang um, pangyengi alam, no? hindi naman uh, dapat. Okay, accuracy, of course, that's uh, equal to your factual reporting. All right, so uh, letter A for number seven. Okay. We go to number eight, the unroofed area where water jars are kept in Bahay Kubo. Would it be letter A, Silong? Letter B, Dapugan? Letter C, Bangahan? Or letter D, Batalan? Or Batalan? What is our choice? Ma'am Julie Litohon. Para may ibang ibig sabihin, Mama, Ligwak man. Ngunit mas tumatatak sa utak ko ang pagkakamali na di dapat ulitin or di dapat maulit. Parang applicable sa love life, ma. Sa mga taga CRT, Kabanatuan City, mag-e-enroll na lahat bukas sa Guru Pinoy. Hello po. Salamat, Sir Leafmark Talamayan. From Team Brunner to Team Skinner din si Sir Leafmark. Okay, letter D for number 8. Okay, so this is part of your art appreciation. No? So, unroofed area where water jars are kept in Bahay Kubo, the correct choice is letter D, Batalan. Okay, Batalan or Batalan. All right, so this right here uh, is an example of your nipahat at ito yung Batalan, no? an old-fashioned sink. So, wala siyang roof. Usually, wala siyang roof at doon mo pinapatulo no? yung mga tubig-tubig. Meron din minsan na ma malapit sa restroom at doon ka naliligo. Okay? So, parang papag lang siya na po pwede mong paliguan. Alright? So, batalan is what we are looking for. Uh, it has another term na makikita natin sa next nating uh, slide. So, these right here are the other parts of your bahay kubo. Your bulgan or bulwagan, no? this is the area reserved for entertaining guests. So, kumbaga yung bulgan, that's the living room. Okay? So, living room. Uh, silid is a private room used for sleeping, our bedroom. Paglutuan or gilel is a kitchen or cooking area. Your kitchen o paglutuan. Silong, this is the space found underneath the house used as a storage, uh, storage space for the farming and fishing implements and also for the animals kept. So usually, kapag kabahay, kubo yung bahay, no? uh, merong, uh, di ba, merong kang kawayan, no? yung stand ang pinaka-stand, pinakalige ng, ng bahay mo, at merong part doon na nasa ilalim ng bahay. No? So that's, that's the space found underneath the house. Doon yung mga manok, merong mga, mga lambat, merong mga ginagamit para sa farming. No? That's your silong. Silong, of course, in English, it's, is shed. No? So shed. 
Parts of the kitchen, you have the pogan. This is a table on top of which is the river stone, uh, shoe-shaped stove or kalano. So the pog, we call it the, uh, the pog, the pog, the, 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 sorry po. The pog also, no? the pog in uh, Hiligay Nono. So the pog, kumbaga, ito yung pinaka uh, kitchen top mo. Okay, bangahan. This was later called banggera or banggerahan and is used as a place for drying and storing pots and pans, drinking glasses, plates, and other kitchen utensils. So bangahan, banggerahan, that's the sink, no? So banggerahan din yung tawag sa amin sa hiligay nun. And of course, batakoy, ito yung batalan, no? Batakoy or batalan kanina. Unroofed area where water jars are kept, okay? So used for drinking, washing, and bathing. Okay, uh, batakoy is another term for batalan. Alright, so again, ang ating pong hinahanap po sa batalan. Alright, we go to number nine. What type of market where in the means of production are owned by private individuals and their desire to make a profit? Letter A, free market. Letter B, neoliberalism. Letter C, capitalism. Or letter D, privatization. What's our choice? A shout out kay Ma'am Kylie Australia. Super excited doing live. Hello po, Ma'am Kylie. Very good, no? Super excited si Ma'am Kylie. You should feel that way, di ba? Mukhang may crush si Ma'am Kylie dito sa live. Dito sa Team Skinner. At excited siya kada live. Alright, letter D, privatization. Private individuals and their desire to make a profit. I see C's and D's. Alin kaya ang tumpak? Okay, again, please do not forget to like, love, and share our video. And of course, if you'd want to enjoy the full video and download our materials, join Team Skinner, send a message to our Facebook page. All right, for number nine, the correct choice is letter C, capitalism. Okay, so capitalism po, yung ating hinahanap. Um, the production is owned by private individuals and their desire to make profit. Now, for the term uh, making your profit, meron kong capital, that's capitalism. So letter C is tumpak. Now, your free market, your free market, no, free market po is based on supply and demand. There's little government control. Kumbaga, wala masyadong control ang gobyerno. That's your free market. Letters B and D, parehas lang po sila. They seek to transfer the control of economic factors from public to private ones. No? So, from public to private, that would be your privatization. Kunwari, yung PLDT dati ay um, uh, public siya, na it started as a public entity, ngayon ay private na siya. Yung PNB, no, semi-private na din siya. Okay, so Meralco, I'm not sure about Meralco, no, kung dati ay public siya. Okay, so that's privatization or neoliberalism. Yung ating pong hinahanap was free, uh, not free market, sorry, capitalism. Okay, so capitalism is tumpak. Ah, PAL before was private? Is PAL um, public na ba yung PAL ngayon? I, th I thought uh, private pa rin yung PAL. Okay, so privatization naman po from public to private. Alright, we go to number 10. At work, a customer gives Shannon an extra $10. Instead of pocketing the money, Shannon lets the customer know he overpaid. Uh, Shannon is acting with letter A, viability, uh, letter B, integrity, letter C, transparency, or letter D, rule of law. Okay, so sabi ni Facebook user pala, hindi ko po nakikita yung name nyo. Uh, it was public before. Okay, so ngayon private na siya. Alright, number 10, ICBs. Okay, so instead of pocketing the money, merong extra $10. Shannon is acting with, the correct choice, of course, is integrity. This is integrity, no? When you say integrity, um, um sorry, no, nakuha, nakita na yung viability. When you say integrity po, kahit na walang nakakaalam, kahit na it's just between you and God, then you'd still do it, no? Even if um, other people are not watching, you still do a good deed. Yan po yung ibig sabihin ng integrity. No? So even while no one can see it, you still do the right thing. That's integrity. 
All right. So what is viability? Viability is the ability to work successfully. You know, it's viable. It can become successful. You know, that's uh, viability. Transparency is a quality of being done in an open way without secrets. Okay. So when you say transparency seal, uh, the government should be transparent. Dapat yung uh, proyekto ng gobyerno merong nakakaratular, no? meron nakatarp. Meron kasi iba, hindi nilalagay sa tarp. No? Hindi natin alam kung sino yung contractor. Hindi natin alam kung kailan um, giniba yung kalsada. No? Dito lamang daw po sa Pilipinas nangyayari. Hindi pa sira yung um, kalsada sinisira na ulit para may budget ulit. Diba? So, um, the government should be transparent. All the transactions should be seen by the people because of course our government is a democratic one it is by the people for the people okay so um transparency that's a quality of being in an open way or being done in an open open way without secrets rule of law naman this implies that every citizen is subject to the law lahat tayo ay uh, subject ng law no no one is above the law that's the rule of law no so ito minsan yung hindi pinafollow ni Tulfo di ba kung gusto mong mabilis ma ma yung action ipapatulfo mo so minsan hindi na siya nagfo-follow ng rule of law no sasabihin niya pwede kitang ipakulong pwede kitang ganito ganyan Okay, minsan mabuti din naman, pero minsan ay parang abuso na din. Okay, so letter B, integrity po yung ating hinahanap. Alright, we go to number 11, the term used by the church, which means filtered version of doctors that results novels and writings. Would it be letter A, expurgated? Letter B, unexpurgated? Letter C, communist? Or letter D, heretic? Okay, what's our choice for 11? 